Hi students, this is day three of our work together and you're going to be classifying triangles by their angles today. This actually is a picture of the bulletin board in the classroom and you'll notice that the word right triangle means that there's one right angle. In this picture the right angle is right there. Okay, so anytime that it has a 90 degree angle, a triangle is called a right triangle. An obtuse triangle is classified by its obtuse angle, which you can see right here, and it will just have one. In order to be called an acute angle, all three of its angles will be acute, meaning less than 90 degrees. So let's recap. A right triangle will have one angle exactly 90 degrees. An obtuse angle will have an angle larger than or greater than or bigger than 90 degrees. An acute angle, all of them will be smaller than 90 degrees. Okay, they're all smaller than 90 degrees. So those are the words you're going to be working with. You'll be telling um, each in each case in the problems, whether a triangle is right, obtuse, or acute. Okay, the instructions say find the value of x and then classify the triangle by its angles. First of all, I'll work on finding the value of x. We know that there are 81 degrees in this corner, or angle, and 84 in this angle, but what we don't know is how many are in this end, this angle right there. So the way we're going to discover that is first of all we have to know that the three angles in a triangle always add up always to 180 degrees. The inside tri angles of a triangle always add up to 180 degrees. So therefore we can um, know that 81 plus 84 plus X, those three angles, together have to make 180 degrees. The next step then would be to take 81 and 84, add them together to get 165 plus x equals 180. We want to get the x all by itself. So in this case, we're going to subtract 165 from both sides. So 165 plus x minus 165. We'll just leave x on the left, and 80 minus 165 will just leave 15 on the right. So that's how we would find out the value of x. The next part of the question said classify the triangle by its angles. All right, so we know that acute triangles have three angles less than 90 degrees. So in this case, I have an 81, an 84, and a 15. So indeed, this number one triangle, this picture here, is an acute triangle. So to get full credit for number one, I'd have to have acute, and I'd also have to show all of my work and that x is equal to 15 degrees. So it would be worth two points. The next section says a triangle with one obtuse angle and no congruent sides. And they'd like us to draw that. Now, you know how well I draw. So I'm going to try to do this as straight as I can with my finger on the iPad. But I expect yours to be neater. So let's see here. Obtuse angle. So I know it's got to be very wide open. Okay. Bigger than 90 degrees. On purpose, I made one leg longer like this one, and one leg of the triangle shorter. Now when I connect those two, I will have made a triangle that is got no congruent sides. They're all different sizes, and it has one obtuse angle. That's number 10. Your job is to draw 11 and 12 correctly. The last part of your work today is on page 111 and it's mixed problem solving. Number one and two, they tell you to draw a picture. Three through seven, you can solve any way you'd like. So I've done my best to draw the picture of Mrs. Renoir's quilt, and she did a quilt top that is four feet up and 
here by six feet. So there's the quilt. And she's going to outline it with squares that are four inches on each side. Now we know every foot has 12 inches. So if each square is four inches, four goes into 12 three times. So on the six foot sides, we know that three times six would be 18 squares would fit across the six foot side. And we have two of those. We have a six foot side here and there'd be another one here. So two 18s. Then again, three four inch squares would fit in each foot. So three times four for 12. And we do that again twice because there's four feet here and four feet here. And when you add that up, that's 60 squares. But let's look at this carefully. The squares to pay attention to are on the ends in the corners. I'm going to kind of color this in for you so you can see it. If we are just going on the edges, we wouldn't be able to fill in the corners of the quilt and it would look jagged. So we need to add four corner pieces to finish the quilt. So we have a total of 60 squares to do all along the outside edge, plus four more squares to be able to do the corner pieces. So Mrs. Renoir is going to need a total of 64 squares. The rest of the problem-solving problems are yours to do. I hope this helped.